Amen. Amen. I am so tired and tired when our God have so much. Something like that did we end, right? The young lady that gave the, the word this morning. I'm so tired and that's exactly where I'll be spending my time to preach the word of God this morning. As you can see, these are my notes, but there is no heading on the top, no topic. So as I was praying and I asked the Lord, I did not receive and I just go ahead and plan the message. But I knew that before the message is true, I will get a topic, a title, so that you can run with this morning. And this is so important for you and I as Christians, as believers, that you understand clearly and have a form knowledge that it doesn't, sometimes we limit God. We limit God in our acts and we limit God in our prayers. And we rob ourselves in the blessings from, of God in our life. Because with God, there is so much more. As we enter into his word this morning, you will see. And so my prayer is that you will take this word this morning and that you will run with it. I love that last worship song that you sang. Please, when I finish reading this verse, lead us back into your sister, Minister Sibu. Thank you. Just remain standing. So I'll be speaking this morning from Psalm 27 and verses 4. One verse and I'll be um, quoting some other scripture. And this is David. And he said, One thing I ask, which is also desire. One thing I ask of the Lord. This is what I seek after. I am tired and tired of the same old story the young lady said just now. When there is so much more with God, we limit the potential, the ability of the God we serve, and we hinder our blessing, we hinder our progress from moving forward with God because of the limits, the boundaries that we set up in our prayer life. And you will see the point I'm getting at as I go through this, this teaching. So he said, this is what I seek. He didn't say that congregation. He didn't say his family. He said, this is what I, David, and you and I should say, this is what I, Andrew, I, you seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to gaze upon his beauty of the Lord, to see him in his temple. Great desire. Great desire. Amen. Please, let us just lead us back into that song of worship. Hallelujah. For your name is holy. Your name is holy. Holy. Love. I want to dwell in your presence, God. this morning 
We come boldly before your throne, the throne of grace. We recognize, Lord, that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your Spirit, says the Lord. And we thank you this morning because in Christ we can do all things. So we come this morning, oh God, and we take honor in you. We take pleasure in worshiping you. Your name is holy. You alone are God. And we give you the highest praise. We give you worship. We worship you this morning. Open our eyes, oh God, to the truth of your word. Open up understanding this morning. Let your word this morning, oh God, find root. Let your word this morning bring conviction. Let your word transform life. Let your word, oh God, lift the oppressors. Let your word this morning set at liberty those who are oppressed, those who are depressed, those, oh God, who are sad, those who are lonely, those who have been praying, who have been seeking, who have been trusting. But, oh God, they are still in the same position. Let your word this morning be like fire, oh God, in the mouth of your people. Let the word of God storm every heart, bring conviction, bring transformation, bring healing. We thank you this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for what you are going to be doing. We pray and ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That every spirit, oh God, of heaviness be lifted in the name of Jesus. Lifted from this place, lifted from each and every life. Even as I speak your word, Lord, I may bring the cross and exalt Jesus Christ. For you are worthy to be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. You can sit. Let me say thanks to Pastor and Mama Eunice for the opportunity to stand here this morning to preach the word of God wherever they are. Um, let us pray for them that God will use them. We know that he will. Um, and that wherever they are, their lives will be a challenge. And the uh, word to anyone that come into contact with them this morning. Thanks to all the ministers and pastors and everyone here this morning. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. 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 Thank you. So we see David began, and he says that one thing I desire, one thing I ask of the Lord, and that which I seek after. Let me say to you this morning that many dreams and goal punish or perish, sorry, right where we started from in our life, you know, walking with God. And the reason for that is because we become too comfortable with the salvation, saving grace of Almighty God. That we think because we are saved, we can go there and whatever we want or whatever things need to be done, we just say it, which in one phrase is right. We are told that we speak and it will come into command. But then we forget the, that our faith needs to be exercising, exercised because Paul reminds us, he says that without, um, if there is no work to our faith, it is dead. And uh, so many times uh, we, we mix these two things up, the salvation, saving grace of God, and uh, uh, our faith. And we think, well, okay, because I'm saved, you know, it's okay. I can just move on and go on with life. And then we face with situation, we face with things, and we wonder about why is it so difficult. But just a quick reminder, Hosea, the, the prophet reminds us in verse chapter 4 and verse 6, he says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And this morning, I pray that as a church, as a people, that we will not, be, will not fall into that place where because of the lack of knowledge of God's word, of wisdom, that we are, have missed our, 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 our prayers from being answered, our goal, or we have missed what is rightfully ours that has been given to us through the Holy Spirit, but that you will remember and capture every vision and understanding of the Word of God so that you can able to live your life and inherit the blessings of God. We know that it's a sin to be, you know, for us to live under poverty and all these things. And of 
course, we have the, the privilege, we have the right. We have been given the blessing, we have been given the promise, the word of God to our life, to make our life, to make our family, to make situation better. But the problem is with us is that we have come, as I said earlier, we have come to that place and sometimes we mix this whole thing up with our saving grace and with faith. And forget that as Christians, as believers, that faith is an imp- plays an important role, an important part in our life. Amen? So... <clears throat> In Matthew 25 and verses 14 to 19, uh, one of the parables that Jesus uh, spake uh, to his disciple, and um, he talks about uh, the talent. Uh, he talked about this man that came, uh, that was going on a far journey, and he entrusted uh, um, the talent or his wealth, his property, into the hands of these uh, three fine young men. And one of them he gave three, and another one he gave two, and then to the one he gave one. And the Bible says that the one with the three went, and he worked that three, and he gained three more. And the one with the two, he also went, and he worked that two, and he gained two more. But the one with the, that received the one talent, the Bible tells us that he take it and he dug a pit, or old, and he put it inside. And the verse concludes, verse 15, that to each he gave two, and to the other one, one according to the ability. According to the ability. This morning, I pray that your ability will not be narrow. Amen. As you serve God, as you worship, even as you reach out to him, that you will see that God is a faithful God. He's a God who is rich, who is powerful, who has everything. And all you and I have to do is to simply trust him and follow direction. And so the, the, the Bible says that he dug a hole and he, he put that one talent under there. And then the master came back from his journey to see what they have done. And when he came, he found out what this one guy did with the talent. And when, I want to pause and say something to you and I as Christians, that if you are not prepared and ready as a Christian for God to do great things and big things in your life, don't ask him. Because if you are not ready for it, you won't be able to handle it. You weren't able to handle it. It wouldn't work for you. We all as Christians must be prepared. We must know the word of God. We must understand clearly what God's word says concerning us. And when we do so, we will be able to move into the realm. We will be able to see God with bigger vision, bigger ideas, because we know that the God we serve is, is, a, is a God who is limited with power. He is unlimited. He has so much in him. And so the man... Was given five, we said that he, he received five more and the others, uh, sorry, yes. So let me, I, I gone past myself, sorry. And verse eight, and um, the one with the one he talent, he dug it and so forth. And this morning, I want to call your attention to, we are living in a world, a spirit world where if you don't be careful and you does not know the word of God, you doesn't know what God says concerning you, your family, your church, and what God is able to do for you. You can pray how much you want it. You can fast. You can ask God. And you can cry out your desire. But if you doesn't move from that place where you are to move towards what God wants for you, what your heart desire needs, David, we know that he was a man of God's own heart. And uh, even though he was so close to God, he understand that what he was asking, what was his desire, he understand that his salvation with God had nothing to do with what he wants to become or what he needs to become, what God wants him to become with his life. And so he said, this I ask, this I desire. And this is what I seek after. And there must be a seeking in you and I life. Very often we become too comfortable where we are. 
very often we become too comfortable and think that, okay, it is well. And so, you know, again, I say that we are all saved, and so it's okay. I live my life now. No, it doesn't work that way. And so after a long time, the man came back. He saw whatever that, what he did. And this is what I want to draw your attention to about that, that spirit I said just now. It's a dangerous spirit, and it can blind your vision. It can blind your sight. And even blind your acts, you will ask and you will pray. But if you are not ready to, to move forward by faith, to take the challenges and go forward, regardless of what, you will not be able to succeed in life. And so we become sometimes reluctant in our prayer life. We become, you know, we, we pray and we ask God for things. We, we trust God and in our heart there are burdens and desire. We want to become this person. We want to do this for God. But we pray and we just sit right here with it. We doesn't move. We doesn't try to, to go out and see what we, can, what we can have, what we can achieve, you know, from that. We, we allow the, 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 the spirit in us to, to die right there. And then we ask ourselves, but why? It's because we just sit. We become so complacent where we are. We're happy where we are. But that is not what God wants of us. God wants us to move on. God wants us to, to get on higher ground, on higher level with him. And so this morning, I want to challenge you that listening from the word of God, listening the story of David, is that it should change your mind and your concept of the way you think and the way you do those things in the house of the Lord in your life and start it to act with faith. Let your faith, let your imagination expand to the length and the breadth of this world because there is greatness in each and every one of us. There is so much in us that we can do if only we believe and trust in him. And so he said, one thing I've desired of the Lord and this will I seek after. Uh, and, uh, our, our, our team, we know, is order my steps. But may I remind you that if God is going to order our step and we're going to stay away from God. We know that David said, I want to be into the house of the Lord. So it is okay for us to come into the house of the Lord. So be careful how you're staying away from the house of the Lord. Because it's a sin. David was so close to God, but yet still, he understand the importance of being in the house of God. He understand how important it is to have fellowship with one another. He understand the seriousness of prayer. And he understand that if he's going to have his breakthrough and his blessing and his desire met, he must come in the house of the Lord where the body of Christ is and come together and worship so that when he comes, he understand that there is something that happened. In the house of the Lord. He understands that when we sing together, when we pray together, and when we preach together, that something happened. The enemy has been put to shame. The enemy has been put to disgrace. But when you stuck yourself home, except for no uh, serious reason, then he got a hold of your life and he says, okay, this is what. And he started to weaken your faith. He started to weaken your belief. And things started to happen. And you asked yourself, but why am I not progressing? Why am I not progressing? prospering. Why other people are moving up? Why other people are getting there and I'm not getting there? Check your life. Check and see what you are doing. Check and see where you are. It's a serious thing that a serious examination that you and I need to do with the word of God this morning. It is very, very important for us as Christians. He knew the importance of being in the house of the Lord. He knew the importance of, of uh, uh, falling in love with Jesus. He knew that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And you can't tell me that you stay away. You're staying away from, from the presence of the Lord and you're happy. You, you're having joy. No, you're robbing yourself of the blessings of God. He knew that fellowshipping with the saint is, is a connection to his blessing and dreams and desire. The man did not just acts and, uh, for, for his desire to be met, but he, he seek after it with a diligent heart. And it, it is what, it is that which was, which was okay with him. He okay with that. He knew, he understand fully well. And so after he finished praying, he did not say, well, okay, let me go to sleep. Wake up tomorrow morning, take some coffee, go to work, come back, 
and, and went to bed again, have, have his supper and went to bed. No. He understands that there is something in life, that sometime in life and something that you and I need and we, we wish to have, but we have to go the extra mile. We have to position ourselves in the right place so that we can receive from God what he has in store. So that our dreams, our, our goal, our desire, our prayer, they all can be met. If not, we will kill our dreams. We will kill our desire right where we are, right where we have prayed them. They will destroy right there because that is the trick of the enemy. That is how the enemy is working. And so I challenge you this morning by the word of God to don't just pray and leave everything and say, okay, I'm okay. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I'm baptized. I'm saved. Blah, blah. You know, no, 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 no. Move forward. Move forward. Leap. Take a step of faith and reach out because God has great things in store. God has plenty of things in store for you to do and to do with your life. But as if is how he see you how we see the availability that you give to him, how much of you, how much of I, I give to him, that is how you're going to be used. The Bible told us about a woman who had a serious problem, conquest of period, bleeding. And she was there for many years. And her desire was to get well. She spent all the money that she had. She went to all the greatest physicians, the doctors, but none could have healed her. And in her heart, she wanted to be well. Nobody is comfortable with sickness, with disease. We all want to be well. We all want to be strong. But the Bible says something about this woman. She heard that Jesus was in tongue. And when she heard that he was in tongue, she did not only stop where she said, I want to be made well. So she prayed and she asked, Lord, touch me and heal me. No, no, no. When she heard where he was, she went. She positioned herself in the right place. And that is what I want to encourage you and I also today. As we move, if we're going to move forward in our Christian walk and service with the Lord, we must position ourselves in the right place so that we can have the blessings of God in our life. When we position ourselves, there is no way that the blessings of God are going to pass us. There is no way that our prayers are going to be honored. There is no way that the enemy we will able to block us because we are in the right track. We are positioning in ourselves, in the word of God, in the house of the Lord, among the saints of God, where we belong. And so he will have a hard time fighting with you. As a matter of fact, you will overcome him because of the blood of Christ. And so it was hard for her to get to where Jesus was. But this is faith. And this is the woman, just like David. He desired worship. He desired the house of God. He desired the fellowship. He wants more than what he has to be done in his life. And this woman said, when she went where he was, the Bible tells us that she could not get to him. The crowd was so big, but she did something. The Bible says she pushed her way. She pressed towards, and as she was going there, she still yet cannot touch the man. The crowd was so much. And she said one thing, if I can only but just touch the hem of his garment. And this morning, I am speaking to someone that you have prayed too long. You have waited too long. You have seen too long. You have fasted too long. It is time you put some action in your faith. It is time for you and I to move forward to our goal, to what, to the, to what God has offered. What is your desire? What is it that you have prayed and asked the Lord for this morning? And you have prayed so long and it has not happened. It is time for you and I to put some faith and to move forward. Do not sit and allow the enemy to kill your goal, your vision. Do not sit down and allow Satan to trample upon you. No, no, no. Rise up. Take your faith and move forward. Move. You pray. You ask God. Lord, I want to become this. I want to become that. Oh, I want to. This is my desire. This is my desire to serve you. But yet still, 
You're drifting away from the word of God. You are drifting away from God. You are hardly reading, hardly fellowshipping, hardly coming and attending with the saints and praising God. This is so much important for us this morning. Each and every one is Christian. If we are going to make it to the highest level, if we are going to move all the way where, where our Savior leads us, as the songwriter said, then we must understand that there are some things, there are some sacrifice, there are some pain that we'll have to go through. There are some things that we'll have to give up. There are some things that we'll have to put aside. And when we do so, we will see the result, and the results are going to be very good. I'm a, I'm a witness of that, and I can tell you, and there are so many here today. And so she heard, and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And this morning, you have prayed. You have fast. I don't know what you ask of the Lord. I don't know what is your desire this morning. But you have prayed to God. You have told him, this morning, move from where you are. Move from where you are. Move from out of that home. Move from that, that corner that you're in. And get into bigger dimension. Get into bigger thing. Because the God we serve, he is great. He is limited. He, ha he, has, no, he has limitless power, sorry. Limitless power. He can do so much. So stop putting God in a corner and box him up. And see the God that you and I serve, how great he is, how powerful, and the things that he's able to do. And so the Bible says that one touch, and she touched his garment, and she was made well. I pray that you will have a change of heart and mind in serving God this morning. We all do. So many times the enemy can allow the things around us, our situation, our problems to block our vision. And we cannot see where the Lord is taking us. We cannot see where God is taking us. And so we wonder why. We wonder why. We look and we see how God is raising up men and women among us. And for nothing, we, we are still there. And God is using them great and mighty, and we ask ourselves, when is my time? The question you and I need to go back and ask ourselves, am I ready? Am I ready to be used? You cannot say that you're ready to be used, and you, you're blocking yourself out. You're keeping yourself out from the word of God, from the things that you're supposed to do, from the place you're supposed to be. And you want God to bless you. You want to become like great men. You see great men and women taking the mic, preaching, doing so many things, moving, singing, and all these things. It didn't come easy. It came with a sacrifice. It came with a price. It came with toilet nights. I know what is it because I, I, I'm there. Early in the morning, get up, read the word of God, pray in the night. Any time in the night, just get up and pray. Seeking God's face because I understand that the more I seek him is the more God will reward me. The more God will bless me. It's the more of him I will have. But if I'm going to become lazy and expect that I will become like some of these great men and women, it wouldn't happen. God is saying he wants our availability. He wants to see how much of us we're going to give to him. And so it's my prayer like the Enoch in Acts chapter 8 and 29. The Bible says that when he heard the word of God, he asked, he asked to be, for one to interpret the word for him. He did not only have a desire for God and his word and his church, but he wanted to know the word and he positioned himself there so that he can be taught the word of God. And if you and I want to know God's word, if you and I want to know what God says concerning you in this Bible, if you and I want to know where you can be and how far you can go, you have to position yourself in the right place. You have to come to that place where you will humble yourself and submit to the teaching and the leadership of the Holy Spirit and watch and see what God will do with you. Faith in action is what it's called. 
We are praying, Lord, all our steps. Yes, very good. But if that is all we are doing, then it wouldn't take us anywhere. So yes, and this morning, I want to leave us, please, please, do my, all my notes says, okay, yeah. So as I said just now that it's faith in action, and if we are going to ask the Lord to order our step today, if this would be your prayer, like the songwriter says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven, Table land, and higher plain that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubt arise and fear dismay. Though some may dwell where those are bound. My prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. If this is your prayer this morning, I pray that God will help you. He said, I want to scale the utmost eye and catch a glimpse of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. This morning, it is time we stop pretending, we stop playing and get serious with God and his word. We are living in real difficult times. And the word from the Lord this morning is that you should stand firm, stand and ready to be used by God. Amen. God wants to use each and every one of us. Give yourself afresh this morning to him. Allow him this morning to use you. Look and see what God will do with you. There is so much in you, and there is so much about you, and so much that God wants to do. This world is dying. Nations are dying. Children are dying. All kinds of problems and trouble we see. We are living in a world of trouble. We are living in a world of pain. And God is saying, he wants us to be ready. He wants to use you and I. The gospel needs to get to the four corners of this world. The word of God needs to be preached. But for many of us, we have killed the dream. We have killed the vision right where you're sitting, right in that home, right in that comfortable corner that you are. You prayed and that's all, but no faith to move forward. No faith to move and watch what God will do with you. While on the other side, the spirit is crying, is grieving. As he looked and see and he's saying, look at my humble servant. Look at my humble servants, whom I want to use, whom I've put my word in. But there's no availability. They're not ready to be used. And then you ask, but why, God, you're using so many others and you're not using me? It's a turning point for you and I this morning. In our faith, in our walk, as we serve the Lord, God wants to do amazing things and great things with you. Are you willing? Are you ready for God to use you? Stop the excuses. Stop all the excuses and find time, make time for God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you.